right. Hi, everyone. My name is Missy Gable. I'm with the UC Master Gardener program. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, our first Facebook Live event, we're talking about selecting plants in the nursery. Uh, we're really glad that you're here with us today. Please, if you have questions, put them in the chat. I'll do my best to get them to them uh, during our live event now. Uh, if I don't though, I'll be sure to review all of the comments later and I will be posting responses to everything um, as quickly as I can. So thanks again for joining us. I want to let you know that our dear friends and partners at the UC Davis Arboretum invited us to come over here and film today. We are at the Arboretum Teaching Nursery. It's a beautiful space behind me here. And again, we're gonna be talking about selecting plants. So, although the weather, at least in Sacramento area, has been pretty warm lately, uh, it is almost fall. It's fall, it doesn't feel like fall, uh, but it is fall and it's time to think about planting. Um, a lot of folks think that planting should be happening in the springtime, but fall is actually the ideal time to get your plants in the ground here in beautiful California. Uh, so why, why is that? Uh, in the fall, plants are kind of slowing down their growth, the temperatures are cooler, uh, and actually the general environmental stress is significantly less for the plants. So they're not dealing with really high intense heat um, that's causing a lot of moisture to evaporate um, either out of the plant or from the soil. Um, and, uh, and so that uh, less stress environment, not having as much um, uh, issues with water retention in the container or in the ground, um, not as much water evaporation, and um, and generally the, the cooler temperatures are really beneficial to the plants. So now's the time to go out and go shopping if you're thinking about doing a planting project. Um, local nurseries right now are, are really well stocked with beautiful plants um, like these ones. And um, so I encourage everyone to head out if you've got a planting project, go to your local nursery uh, and remember that now is a great time to plant in the fall because of this less stress. Once you get the plants in the ground, uh, you're gonna be watering them and taking care of them, um, but you're also gonna be able to take advantage of seasonal rains that will be coming soon. So head out to your local nursery like we've done today. All right, so once you get to the nursery, well, I should say before you get to the nursery, it's really important to have a plan. If you're like me, uh, you probably head into the nursery and get distracted by all of the amazing things. I want to head home with literally everything I've seen today. Uh, so it's important to start with a plan. Know where you're going to be putting new plants in your landscape. Understand the size of that location, the size that that location can accommodate in terms of the plant that you're gonna choose. And also the exposure. Is it a shady area? Partial sun, full sun. Uh, know all of those things before you head to the nursery, or at least that's my recommendation, uh, so that you can make really informed decisions and pick the right plant for your place. All right, so once you get to the nursery, you've got a plan. The first thing you want to do is actually get the lay of the land. Uh, nurseries are typically really well signed or they've got personnel who can help you understand where items are located within the nursery. Um, here at the Arboretum Teaching Nursery, they have some great clusters of plants. Um, they have areas where the sun plants are located and then areas where the shade plants are located. So again, this is all to really help you get to where you've got the right plant in the right place. Okay, and I see Donna, you just joined. Thanks for watching, Donna. Again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to type them in the comments. Happy to help. All right, so now you're at the nursery, you've got the lay of the land, and you know what plant you need for each location in your landscape. So how do you pick the right plant when you're out shopping? All right, so the first thing I do is look for good shoot growth. Um, does the plant generally look healthy? No obvious signs of stress, like um, you would see if the plant was wilted, that would be a sign of stress. Um, the plant has good color. Um, if a plant isn't supposed to be yellowish or purplish, then you wanna be concerned about deficiencies. So definitely look for good color for the plant um, that you're choosing. Uh, you're going to want to look, um, again, I said sh good shoot growth, good color, no obvious signs of pests and diseases. Um, from there, you're gonna wanna pick up the plant 
And I know this is a pretty subjective thing, but you don't want the container that it's in to be too light or too heavy. All right, so that's gonna mean, that's gonna indicate that it's well watered, but it's not super saturated, there's not a lot of water dripping out, or it's not too light um, where it hasn't been watered in a while, and that uh, could cause the plant some stress. So look for all of those signs as you're making your plant selection. You're also going to want to look for a plant <clears throat> that is well well rooted. Um, and we'll talk about a couple different ways that you can figure out if a plant is well rooted. First year, we're gonna wanna find something that isn't wobbly in the container. Um, so the plant, if it's well rooted, you're not going to be able to wobble it out. It's not gonna flop over when you pick it up and shake it a little bit. All right, you're also gonna to wanna to look for plants that don't have any damage. Um, plants that have good um, branch attachments. So here's a great example of a plant with great attachments. Nothing's wobbly, nothing's hanging off or broken. Um, those are all great characteristics. Um, plants that, that have good attachments and aren't wobbly are great indicators that you're finding a healthy plant in your landscape. All right, so don't be afraid to look at the roots of your plant. So when you're looking at, let's see if you guys can see this, there's beautiful white roots on this plant. Those are healthy growing roots. Those roots are taking up the nutrients and the water that this plant needs to survive and thrive. So look for a nice, healthy, good distribution of white roots. Um, that's an indicator that you're choosing a healthy plant. Now, sometimes don't be afraid if what you see either at the nursery or maybe when you get home and you unpot it you might see something like this this is i hope you guys can get a good picture of it this is a more pot bound plant um, the roots are kind of circling around the exterior of this plant here's the bottom you can see that there's a pretty good mat of roots so don't be afraid of this but know that you have to take care of this plant as you're getting it in the ground what I would recommend for something like this is actually taking um, like a digging fork um, from your gar gardening toolkit and just roughing up the edges around this plant so that you can encourage these roots to grow out laterally. That's what's really important. Right now they're growing in this circular pattern and you wanna make sure to indicate to the plant that they should stop that behavior, start growing laterally out into your landscape, into the soil in your landscape so that this plant can be healthy. So rough up these roots, either with your fingers or with a gardening fork. Um, you can use pruning shears if you want to. Um, we might be able to give a demonstration of doing that at a future event, future Facebook Live. All right, another thing you're going to look for, um, and this is particularly important with um, woody plants, um, trees, large shrubs. Uh, you're gonna wanna look for plants, here we go. Um, that don't have what I call circling roots. So what you're going to do is kind of dig down a little bit in the surface. Oh, excellent, Lauren is always roughing up the roots. Um, Lauren, it's a really good practice. Make sure you're doing that in your landscape. It really promotes the lateral root growth, um, which is important to getting all of the nutrients that the plant needs. Thanks for your comment. So um, as I mentioned, with woody plants, it's especially important to make sure that you've got a good foundation for your root system. So I like to go up to my plants and I'm not afraid to kind of dig up at the top. I'm looking for two things. The first thing I'm looking for is what's called the root flare. So that is the location where the first lateral root comes out from the base of the plant. That's called the root flare. Now the root flare, sometimes in nursery plants, is not located at the soil level. So you're gonna to wanna to dig down a little bit until you find the root flare. I always say that if the root flare is more than two inches below the soil surface, it's probably not a plant that I'm going to choose um, because you have, if the root flare is two inches below the soil surface, you have a really small, um, small kind of can, whatever is in this can is very small. So the amount of roots that you have is pretty minimal. Um, so if the root flare is two inches below the soil surface, it might not be a plant that I would suggest. Um, in this plant, it's just right below the soil surface. Um, so I'm gonna dig down and just check how, how deep that root flare is. 
Um, and then I'm also going to check and make sure that there's no circling roots. So if you see a large woody root that's kind of twisted around in a circular pattern, that's called a circling root. Um, we can definitely talk more about those at an, a future Facebook post. Um, but you're going to look to identify whether or not your plant has circling roots. If it does have circling roots and you are a keen gardener, maybe you're a UC Master Gardener volunteer, you might know how to deal with those circling roots um, to mitigate any negative effects on the plants. But if you don't know, just avoid the plant that has circling roots. Okay, I'm gonna head back to the root flare thing for a minute. This is important. When you take this plant home, you're gonna be hopefully putting it in your landscape. Now again, if you're buying a woody perennial or a tree, um, and you put it into your landscape, you want that root flare. So that's where the, the first lateral root comes out from um, the base of the plant. You want that to be at or just above the soil level. Julie, you asked if I can pull this out so you can see the entire root ball. Um, I have to admit what I really wanna do is clean all the soil out from this so that you guys can see it, um, see the actual structure of the root ball. Um, I'm not going to do that because these guys are preparing for their plant sale this weekend and I don't want to create a big mess in their beautiful nursery. But tell you what, Julie, I think it would be a really great practice for us to do um, a little Facebook Live presentation on trees and tree roots and how you can look at a root ball and assess whether or not it's healthy and how to deal with um, circling or kinked roots before you plant in your landscape. So um, again, I want to make sure when I'm planting that, that that root flare, where the first lateral root comes out from the base of the plant, is at or just above the soil level in my landscape. Okay, so that's in my ideal situation. You're going to have a plan, you're going to go to the nursery, you're going to find great plants, select beautiful healthy options, and then you're going to take them home and you're going to put the right plant in the right place in your landscape. Okay, that's the ideal. How many of us though have a tendency to take plants home from the nursery and leave them there for a little bit? We had a question submitted uh, before uh, we did this Facebook Live about how long you can hold a plant in your landscape, uh, which is a really, really good, valuable question. So best practice is to get your beautiful plants home. You've put a lot of work into selecting healthy plants. Get them right into the ground. Um, start taking care of them. When you take these plants home and you put them in your landscape, keep in mind that their little root systems are that big, right? It's confined to the size of the pot that it was in. So no plant, even if it's a great desert plant that's low water, no plant is actually low water when you first get it because the roots haven't had a chance to penetrate into the soil. So um, make sure that you put your plants on a regular watering schedule mulch the ground so that you don't lose water to evaporation and wait for those seasonal rains before you back off on a very regular watering schedule. Now if you can't uh, do the ideal, if you take your plants home and you can't plant them right away, what do you do? So I'm heading back to, to this. The size of the root ball is really really small. This plant has pretty intense water needs because the roots haven't penetrated out into any native soil where it can look for different um, for water and different nutrients. So uh, you're going to want to water regularly. I check plants that are kind of in a holding area in my house. I check those plants daily and typically have to water them daily. Another important point is that they're in this little black plastic container, really thin walls. Um, so you're going to want to have to protect that from any extreme heat or sun exposure. Um, that can actually kill the roots uh, that we were looking at before, those beautiful white healthy roots. So different ways you can do this is make sure that the plants that you've bought home are not in um, a full exposure area. They're protected from the sun. I have heard some people take the extra step of painting these containers, these black containers, painting them white. Um, I always say if you have time to paint your containers white, you probably have time to just plant these in the landscape. But if you wanted to try that, you could. Um, I have in desperate times, I've actually taken um, these little pots and I've set them inside a terracotta pot that's about the same size. So there's just at least a little bit of buffer from the extreme heat on this thin black plastic. So keep that in mind. Um, you're gonna, again, be checking these plants daily, watering them regularly. 
you're going to protect the black pot so the roots don't um, uh, get hurt. And then you're going to also check daily for signs of stress. Is there wilting? Are you, um, are you seeing any changes in color? Um, because these plants at the nursery, they're getting something called fertigation. It's fertilizer and irrigation that happens all at the same time. Because these little plants, again, have this small um, root ball and they're not exposed to native soils. So um, if you see signs of color changes, that might indicate that you have a nutrient deficiency um, and that you would need to address with a fertilizer. Again, the best practice is to get your plants in your landscape right away. If you can't, make sure that you're checking them every day. Make sure that you are watering them regularly and, um, and looking for any signs of stress. So now we have planted our plants. We've got a beautiful, successful fall planting that we've completed. Make sure you're taking care of those plants so that they can thrive in your landscape until those seasonal rains can help you out with the regular watering of those plants. Um, most plants take some time to establish in the landscape, um, so I wouldn't ever back off on my watering until I know that those plants have established. Depending on the size of the plant, what you've planted, um, oftentimes I say to people that a, a woody tree might take three years to establish in your landscape before you could actually back off a little bit on the water. Um, so keep in mind that plants aren't immediately low water or drought tolerant. Um, and I wish you all a very successful fall planting season. I'm personally looking forward to getting out in my landscape as well. So if anyone has questions, please be sure you're posting them in the comments. While you do that, I want to make sure that you know that if you are in driving distance to UC Davis, again, we're at the beautiful Arboretum Teaching Nursery. They have a plant sale this weekend on Saturday. 9 to 11 is for members. Uh, 11 to 1, the sale is open to the public. So if you're in the area, visit it. It's beautiful. It's tempting. Um, it's just absolutely amazing right now. If you're not in this area, check with your local UC Master Gardener program about exciting plant sales and other fall gardening events taking place in your area. Follow up with them to see what activities and events you can engage in. Uh, you can find your local program by visiting us online at mg.ucanr.edu. We'll also be sure to put the URL in the comments for you guys. Um, if you have questions while you're making your plan, figuring out the right plant for your space where you're going to be planting, again, don't hesitate to reach out to the local UC Master Gardener program. Uh, Lauren asks, what's your recommendation on a flowering native California shrub? I have a large area in full sun. Um, Lauren, there are so many options for you. Uh, it really depends on the size of the space that you have. One of my favorite California native shrubs is actually California flannel bush. It's got huge, beautiful yellow flowers. It is a massive plant though, so you're going to have to be really cautious with that one. I hope you have a big space where you can put something like that. Other great options are ceanothus. They come in a variety of sizes. Um, you can get very tall ceanothus and you can get low growing, very horizontal ceanothus. So that's a great California shrub um, for a larger space. Uh, just make sure you pick the right cultivar. If you want a full list of California native shrubs, I would be delighted uh, to help you or to connect you with a UC Master Gardener volunteer who could help you. Uh, let us know in the comments that you want more information or you know what color flower you want and we will be happy to follow up with you. All right, so any additional questions, don't hesitate to post them in the comments. We'll be sure to follow up and double check everything as well. Don't forget if you're in the local area, this beautiful space is open for a plant sale this weekend from 9 to 1. Check with your Master Gardener program or other um, space local retailers in your area to find out about great fall gardening events that you can participate in. I truly um, wish you the best of luck with your fall landscapes. Uh, have a wonderful time and uh, enjoy yourself while you're out there planting. Thank you so much for being with me today. I really appreciate everyone's time. Take care.